Errors in inventory. I always say that when we talk about this topic, clearly we're not talking about having to fix our own mistakes because we're not going to make any errors in inventory. What we're looking at is the situation where somebody else has made a mistake in inventory and we're going to have to fix it. What we're talking about with errors in inventory is something's overstated or understated. For example, the company overstated beginning inventory. The company understated purchases. The company overstated ending inventory. And the question is, what's the effect on profit of this mistake? Okay, that's the situation that we're going to have to answer for on the exam. They overstated, they understated, maybe. Preferred stock. This is the second type of stock a company can have. A company doesn't have to have preferred stock. It's a choice. When you buy stock, you know whether or not you're buying common or preferred stock. So what we're going to do here is look at the characteristics of preferred stock. We're going to look at some types of preferred stock. And the biggest issue connected to preferred stock are dividends and the way preferred shares pay dividends and what that means for the company. But we start with the discussion of what preferred stock is. The name is Preparing the statement of cash flows. What we're going to look at here is kind of an overview of the process of preparing the statement of cash flows. We're not going to get into all of the details yet because if we understand the process, it's going to make those details a lot easier to put together to come up with the statement of cash flows as we need it to be. When we're talking about preparing the statement of cash flows, we have some very good news as kind of a starting point. Recognition. This is the process of making the journal entry where we record the fact that the company has had revenue. And the issue that we have is when should revenue be recognized for the company? Well, usually revenue is recognized when the customer buys the goods or services and either pays for them or promises to pay for them. That's 99% of all the transactions in the world are very simple. There's a cash transaction, a credit transaction, and everybody knows when revenue needs to be recognized. What we're going to do is look individually at all the different kind of unusual situations where it's not quite obvious when the revenue needs to be recognized and we'll look at those situations and how the company's going to recognize revenue in each of those unique situations. But here we're kind of looking Planning to budgeting. We talked about planning, we talked about strategic planning, and what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take the next step in that process, and planning and budgeting are connected to each other. If you have a plan without a budget, well, the plan was a good start, but the budget is kind of what's going to make that actually happen. Without a plan, it's hard to make a budget because you don't know what exactly it is that you're supposed to be budgeting for. And so what we need to do is we need to start with planning because it's the plan process cost an example. We've talked about the seven steps, we've looked at it theoretically, and now we're going to do it with numbers. We're going to take the same set of Joint product costing. This is another situation where we have a mathematical allocation. We have
legislative initiatives about internal control. We said internal controls is absolutely important to a company, and it's so important that governments across the world internal controls. This is a fairly large topic. We're going to spend a little bit of time on it. We're going to start here with just kind of an introduction about internal controls, what internal controls is, the definition of internal controls, the objectives of internal controls, and then later we'll look at the components of an internal control system. But we start